Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Boney and I'm a portrait photographer. I recently upgraded from the 12 Pro Max to the new 13 Pro Max, and I think it's incredible that a phone I carry around in my pocket has a camera that can capture portraits that could rival those taken with even professional cameras. But just how good is this camera? Well, I'm gonna take you on a ballerina photo shoot with me and I'll show you portraits taken with the iPhone 13 Pro Max as well as my Canon EOS R. I'll also show you the camera screen on the iPhone 13 Pro Max so that you can get the most from this camera. And then I'll also show you the editing options in the iPhone camera app so that you can get these rich, warm, beautiful colors in your portraits. But before we go any further, please do me a quick favor and click the like and subscribe buttons below. And the video you're watching right now was taken with the iPhone 13 in the new cinematic mode, and all the footage you'll see in the photo shoot was taken with either the iPhone 12 Pro Max or the iPhone 13. Now we'll get our camera set up for our shoot and we're gonna start in portrait mode. In this upper left-hand corner, we have our icon for the flash. That can either be turned on or off. We're gonna leave the flash off because we're shooting in daylight. The next little icon we have is the exposure. And so we can adjust that exposure a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. I prefer to shoot just a little bit darker because then I can adjust the exposure brighter in post and I don't have any areas that are blown out. The next option is in the upper right hand corner, which is our F with a little inside of a circle. And when we tap on that icon, we get our F stop adjustments. So we can slide that from 1.4, which is the amount of bokeh effect around our subject. And if we increase that number all the way to 16, then it's going to reduce the amount of blur or bokeh that is behind our model. I prefer to keep the set at 2.8, and that will be the same f-stop setting that's on my Canon EOS R that I'm also shooting with. Now the next option we have is this little yellow arrow at the top, and if we toggle that arrow, then it pulls up these options here across the bottom. This first icon was the flash, which we already talked about, it's either auto, on, or off. The next icon was the exposure setting, which we already set to a negative uh, 0.7. The next option here is the timer, which we won't need the timer. The next option are these circles, which allows us to adjust the settings here by either making our picture style a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. And this is going to affect all pictures that are taken. So I prefer to just keep it on original and then I can add any color effects later. The next icon is the F, which we already talked about, which is our F-stop, which we will leave set right there. So those are all of our settings. Um, the last ones here is natural light. We have these little sliders here that we can go from natural to studio, contour, stage, mono, as well as a high key light mono. But again, since we're shooting outdoors, we'll just stick with natural light and then we can add any of those effects later. All right, time to start shooting. Let's go ahead and pull your hand in just a little bit closer to you. There we go, that's perfect. Nice little, just a relaxed expression right there. Beautiful. Now let's bring your nose this way just a little bit more towards the light. There we go, one, two, three. Perfect, now bring the nose straight to the camera. Yes, right there, perfect. Now I'm gonna get a couple shots with my Canon while we have this set up. All right, go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, have a hand extended, one, two, three. Bring the nose this way just a little bit more. Yep, one, two, three. And then looking directly at the camera, one, two, three. Beautiful. All right, now I have her here. Let's go ahead and zoom in and get some more headshots. Go ahead and put both hands just in your lap here. Yep, a nice arched back. Perfect. Yep, one, two, three. Beautiful, little baby smile. One, two, three. Perfect. All right, let me get a horizontal while we're here. One, two, three. Bring the nose this way just a little bit. Yep, I'll pull you have a little hair right in front of your eye on this side. There you go. Excellent, one, two, three. All right, again, looking directly at the camera. Yep, one, two, three. Perfect. Let's give a little more bend on the arms. Yep, there we go. Yes, one, two, three. Now go ahead and I want you to look down right here at these flowers right here by me. Yep, there we go, so your nose goes around. One, two, three. There we go, one, two, three. Now let's wrap this arm around. So actually, let's zoom out to our one for this. We're still in portrait mode, and then we can get a little bit more in here. There we go, one, two, three. Beautiful. One, two, three. Now go just real soft belly hands. Let's bring your back hand a little bit higher in the front. Yes, just like that. 
just turned it off a little bit so we get some light coming in from that side. There we go. Perfect. And then push your chin forward just a little bit and then down just a little bit. Yes, right there. Go ahead and actually lift your chin up just a little. There we go. One, two, three. Go ahead and bring the nose back to the camera. Yes, there we go. One, two, three. Little baby smile. Three. There. Fantastic. And so maybe we just do something like a nice, like a passe, something like that. All right, yeah, so let's give it just a little more bend on your hip. Yeah, there we go. So one step forward so you're in the sunlight. Yep, one more. There you go. Okay, perfect. Okay, whenever you're ready. Nice. And just kind of look out the top of your hand. Yes, gorgeous. Chin up just a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Hold that. Okay, let me... Come in. Try to bring your bend your elbows in so your hands come in a little closer to you. Yes, there we go. Beautiful looking right here. And then we get that just that full body. Yep, go ahead looking right here. Yep, spread the hair a little bit on your face. There we go. Yep, so same thing. Yep, just nice and gentle, just a susu. Uh, soften your elbows. There we go. Kind of rest them right here on the chair. There we go. So we get a nice little open. There. Perfect. And eyes right at the camera. Yes. Okay, now we come in close on a for a headshot for this. Nose around this way. Yes. Perfect. One, two, three. Raise your chin up a little bit more. Portrait. One, two, three. We go. We'll go horizontal here. One, two, three. Bring the nose this way a little bit more. One, two, three. Go ahead and look back down at that spot where you're yes. One, two, three. When you tap the word edit above your photo in the Photos app, the following screen opens up. The second icon on the bottom opens up the individual editing controls. The first icon that looks like a magic wand is auto and will automatically adjust your settings. You can tap it again to turn it off. I prefer to adjust my settings individually to get the look I want. The second icon is exposure. You can move the slider left or right to overall lighten or darken your photo. I'm setting my exposure to 15. Next is brilliance. You can increase the brightness of the light areas in your photo. I like the brilliance set at 30. Adjusting the next setting called highlights will lighten only the highlights in your photo. You can also decrease the highlights to soften your photo. I'm setting the highlights to 10. Next, you can adjust the shadows. And as you move the slider to the right, the shadows become lighter. Or if you move it to the left, only the shadows become darker. I prefer to lighten up the shadow, so I'm going to take it all the way up to 60. Adjusting your contrast increases the visual distance between your darks and your lights, either giving more punch to your photo or flattening out the differences. I'm going to set my contrast to negative 7 to soften the light and color just a little. The next option is brightness, and the brightness is what you would imagine as it brightens up the light areas of your photo, but be careful not to blow out your highlights. I'm going to set my brightness to 10. The next icon is the black point, and what this is going to do is find the darkest values in your photo and darken them to black. This adds more depth and richness to your photo, so I'm increasing the blacks to 25. The next icon is saturation, and that is simply going to saturate all of the colors in your photo. You can adjust it to extreme saturation, or you can make your image more dull. I'm setting my saturation to 10. Now the next icon here is Vibrance, and the Vibrance helps add more color with how to being too obnoxious like saturation can be. I like to add Vibrance by setting it to 25. The next thermometer looking icon is for warmth, and this is simply going to make your photo appear warmer or cooler. If we slide to the left, we increase the blues and our image gets cooler. Sliding to the right warms up the image by adding more yellow. I'm going to increase the warmth to 20 to enhance the sunlight in the photo. Next, we can adjust the tint, which will either add more pinks and reds to your photo by sliding to the right or add more greens by sliding to the left. Because Jordan is wearing a pink dress and I have all these pink flowers, I'm going to increase the tint to 20. Now these next icons have to do with the sharpness in your photo. And I have found that the iPhone photos are so sharp on their own that I don't necessarily need to increase sharpness, but you can see how it's affecting her hair by making the strands even more defined. But I don't think that's very pleasing for this photo. The next option is definition, which is very similar. It's basically increasing contrast between the pixels. 
the next noise reduction adjustment is useful if you've taken an image at night and it has a lot of visible grain. The slider will blur the small grain resulting in a smoother photo. But since these were shot in daylight, I don't need to do any noise reduction. The last icon is the vignette option. This allows you to either add a white or black soft border around your photo. I do like the effect of a darker vignette around the photo because it draws you into the eyes of your subject. I'm adding a dark vignette at a setting of 35. Here is a summary of all the settings to be able to get this rich, beautiful color in your portraits. Feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot so you can reference these later. I am very impressed with the camera on this new iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now I may not be replacing my Canon cameras anytime soon for my professional photo shoots, but I do love knowing that I have a phone in my pocket that is capable of taking fantastic portraits at a moment's notice. If you like this video, please don't leave without clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And please feel free to browse my YouTube channel and check out more of my tutorials as well as my behind the scenes videos.